The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Welcome to Vicious Whispers with Mark Tullius, your source for horror, sci-fi, suspense, and all things violent. Hey, what is going on, guys? Thank you so much for joining me today on Vicious Whispers with Mark Tullius. Today we have episode 93, first one of 2021. I have gotten kind of uh, bad about recording. I've been so busy with other shit, um, you know, with family, with the holidays, with all that stuff. Uh, designing my writing class, which starts next week. Kind of crazy, but uh, now nah, I'm excited about that. So there's all kinds of good stuff that's going on. But I just fell away from the podcast. Now that I got it going again, I will try to keep it up every week. Uh, With the writing class, that's going to be... I have one for the next two weeks in a row. And then after that, it'll be every other week. I think I'll be able to do the podcast every week as well. But it may switch to a bi-weekly whatever. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with it. But you will know when I know. Um... As far as the class, the first class that I'm doing is going to be for military, active duty, reserve, and veterans. It'll be free to them. Uh, The second class the following week is going to be for first responders. Uh, After that, it'll be open to the general public. But the first two classes are going to be free. Uh, They'll have, uh, I'll have six featured students, ones that I'm working with every day in class. Uh, They'll be sending me their work. I'll be helping them develop a short story. And then there's going to be, you know, 90 or so in the audience that can also go ahead and follow along, but they won't be getting the one-on-one attention uh, that the other students will be given. Uh, But I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be powerful. I think this is kind of, I don't know, I've always said writing is my purpose, my passion, uh, one of the things I feel that I need to do. But teaching others how to write and how to have this emotional breakthrough by looking at a problem in our past, something that happened in our past, um, I think that may become my new purpose. I'm pretty excited about it. I've had incredible success with other friends. And I'm not saying these people are going to create like an awesome short story. Maybe it'll be really good. Uh, And I will have an anthology that they're all able to apply for because I do want to prove that I can create writers out of people that have never written before. Um, but the whole point of this is going to be the process and learning to really dig, really learning to, you know, take a good look at something that happened in our past. Um, we can fictionalize it and change it and make it safe and all that. But, um, I think it's an incredibly important skill to have and, uh, a great tool and it's something that has kept me sane for a very long time. Um, you know, I think I've talked about it on here a bunch where I dealt with suicidal tendencies most of my life, uh, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of super dark thoughts, obviously. Uh, in fact, since I haven't been doing any writing since Christmas, I finished, I got off the super high draft to Steve Montgomery, I think the day before Christmas, haven't written since I've only been doing busy work. Um, yeah, like those dark thoughts, they add up. Uh, so by not expressing myself on paper, um, yeah, I'm doing a disservice to myself. So I need to make sure to fit all of that in as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be super exciting. The other thing that's going on, uh, finally got back into proper eating, uh, playing around, I'm going to start playing around with the carnivore diet tomorrow. I might just do a modification of it. Uh, I don't really feel like doing it. I want to eat meat all day. It doesn't seem like it's a great thing to be doing. Um, I know a lot of people have had great results, but I'm feeling pretty good. I was getting up there in weight. I was bashing myself for uh, getting up to 210, which is ridiculous because this is still the lightest I've been since high school. Uh, in high school, I was 215, and I've been all the way to 275. So walking around at 210, I should be happy with myself. Uh, but holidays, you know, kind of overdid a little bit, ate like crap, just wasn't feeling good. So that's why I want to start eating better because I know when I eat better, I feel better, I'm more productive. And so that's the goal with that. I also threw out a whole bunch of weed. If you smoke weed, you're probably going to be pissed at me. But my buddy kept bringing up that uh, lots of the stuff I was smoking, you know, it might have been full of different, uh, not pesticides, but whatever. All kinds of chemicals could be moldy. Could I was, I've never been buying my flowers from somewhere that had it already prepackaged and doing it the right way. 
Um, so you don't really know what you're getting. And I just want to give my lungs a break, even though I was only using a vaporizer. So I switched to edibles. In fact, I'm almost done with that too. I really don't think I need the cannabis anymore. I think from everything I've done with my brain, all the neural feedback and everything else, um, like I still obviously enjoy weed, but I don't think I need it every day like I have been doing. And now when I use it, now it's like seven o'clock at night and I'll generally do it just to help me sleep. So that's where we are with that. Um, something I've been pretty consistent with is guitar. I had meant to do guitar every day um, of January, but that hasn't been the case. I think I skipped maybe two days, but I've done, this is more than I've done in a very long time, having fun with it, switching from acoustic to electric to bass, trying to figure out which one I enjoy the most. Uh, lots of times it just depends on what's going on that day, if I want to be a little bit more aggressive, but honestly, I think... Uh, I'm not even worried about people seeing my search history when I would die. I'm more worried about people seeing what I play on Musician because some of the shit I play, like lots of it's classical music, which kind of surprised me at first, but I don't know. I, I enjoy playing classical, um, but it's like pop songs that I've never heard before and I would never listen to, but for some reason they're fun to play on guitar. So that's what I've got going on on my guitar. Um, the other thing I've been very good at, I just finished the Wim Hof book, uh, The Iceman. I definitely recommend it. I think it's amazing. Um, I'm about to start the book Breath, which goes even deeper into the whole science behind breathing and what we can get out of it. But The uh, Iceman's book is awesome. Uh, and I've been doing the cold water therapy every day. So I've been going into my pool. It has been between 51 to like 55 degrees. Um, and at first it was a little bit difficult getting back into it, not wanting to do it. Water is cold. It sucks. I mean, I know it could be much colder, but anything under 60, you get the benefits from. So reading his book definitely just helped solidify my mindset. And so that's what I've been doing. I'm on day 12. I haven't done it yet today, but I will. Uh, it might only be like 10 or 15 minutes, but it's going to be enough to get me going, to make me feel better. I'll do the breathing beforehand to help me uh, just get my body ready for it. But I've been enjoying that. Uh, it's definitely, definitely mind over matter. Like, because who really wants to get out of their nice warm house and go jump in a cold pool or take a cold shower? Like, eh, that's really not something fun that most people want to do. But I'm doing it. So uh, his book did help convince me of that. Um, another really cool thing that just happened. I just released my brand new website. Um, Clay Mosley from Dripify just finished that up, so that has launched. So go to marktulius.com if you want to check that out. Let me know what you think. Um, also launched a Facebook group. So it's a private group. If you ask nicely, I might let you in it. Uh, it's called Dark and Disturbing Fear-Filled Fiction. Quite the mouthful. But I'll be inviting other authors on. Uh, just a chance for us to talk more about fiction and just to interact more because honestly on my author page and even my other page it's so hard to interact with other people only such a small percentage actually see posts so by being in the group just a much cooler thing for me because i want to interact with other people i don't want to just post my own shit all the time so um you know i want to hear, hear from others so if you want to join that group please send me a request and i will let you in um not a whole lot else going on, I don't think. I don't know. That probably sums it up. Just getting back into the school routine with my son. And uh, yeah, still getting to everything together for the class next week. So very excited about that. If you hear this and you do know anyone who is in the military, active duty, reserve, or veteran that would want to do the writing class, be sure to let them know. And to mention where they heard about it. If they So they heard about it from the podcast then way more likely that they will get in as a featured student. Uh, same thing goes for first responders, which will be the following week, starting on the 25th. And then after that, we'll go every two weeks just for the general public. Um, and if you're interested in that, let me know. I think it will be free for all the regular students and the audience, the Zoom members, and then it will just be a charge for the featured students because they are going to be getting a lot of my time and effort. So... That is what I'm doing. It's going to be a big time commitment on my part. It will cut into writing, but I think it will be 
very good for me and I think it's going to be great for these other people as well, the people that do it. So if I could help spread some goodness, that is all I would like to do. All right, guys, let's make this one short. So let's go out on this. Let's go out on Untold Mayhem's Number Days. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this short story. Thanks for checking it out, and I will talk to you guys next week. Later. Number Days. I can't tell if it is day or night in this windowless room. I have no clue what time it is, but I've got a feeling the doctor will be coming back soon. There's nothing to look at but the thick gray foam that covers the ceiling and all four walls. I've already counted and cataloged every bump and ridge on the thin sheet of milky plastic that covers the overhead fluorescent. And there's the camera with the speaker below it. If I faced forward, I'd be looking right at it. Usually I just close my eyes. That way I don't have to look at anything, especially the counter. I don't like to look at the counter. I used to watch the IV drip, drip, drip its way into my arm. I'd look for bubbles. Hope one might find a way through the safety device and float its way into my brain. Painless. But watching the IV measured time. One bag was six hours, four bags a day. And it's not like I need any reminders when the day changes. The doctor always makes sure I know. I also stopped monitoring the IV because I don't need to see the leather band restraining my forearm to the metal chair. I can't even budge them. I gave up after three days. About the same time I went completely hoarse and stopped yelling. My arms, my chest, my waist, my legs all strapped down, beginning to atrophy from inactivity. I'd been in one of these chairs before, although that one didn't have a hole cut in its bottom so I could relieve myself into a bucket. It was after my first DUI, or maybe my second, when I got belligerent. That one time was all it took. I learned my lesson. Never again did I spit on a cop. But this guy isn't a cop. He's not even a real doctor. He's a fucking dentist. I've only got three teeth left along with 29 holes, half of which must be infected. 29 teeth dissolved in that jar of cloudy acid on the counter. Nine of my fingers make up part of the jar's solution. Never again will they hold a brush, caress a breast, scratch an itch. They're gone for good. My right pointer finger is the last one I've got. All that's left of the other nine is the charred mess surrounding the burnt bone of my knuckles. Oh, God, how they hurt. I refuse to cry. No matter what he does to me, I will not cry. It's time. I hear him coming down the stairs. He has the same blank stare he's had the last nine times. It hurts to talk with my tongue so swollen. And he never answers me, but I have to try. Doc, Doc, will you talk to me? He's got his back to me, arranging his instruments on the counter. I'll give you anything you want. Please just stop this. I swear I'll never tell anyone. He keeps fiddling with his damned toys. Doc, stop this. He looks over his shoulder, stares at me as if I were scum. You don't even know my name. I didn't recognize him until the third day, but I leave that out when I say, I know who you are. Oh? Your wife died. It was an accident. You killed her. You should be in prison. It was a terrible mistake. I've learned. You were arrested twice in the last year, and you had another accident three weeks ago. You'll never learn. It will never happen again. I know it won't. Now open wide. The metallic contraption in his hands is like something out of a hardcore bondage video. It only hurts to fight it. Good. Nice and tight. I can't talk. 
the cold metal pressing against my volcanic gums. I know what he's going to do, but it doesn't help. These aren't the tools he uses in his real office. They're rusty and dirty and haven't been cleaned in the last ten days. They sit on the counter, the blood and bacteria growing before my eyes. His favorite is the rusty exacto he twirls around in each abscess, but the corroded pair of pliers always comes first. The pain is intense, but even worse is the sound of my tooth slowly tearing from the gum, its roots stretching to the breaking point and finally snapping free. Two more pulls, and I'm toothless. He holds the jar in front of me and drops it in, another permanent piece of me dissolving in the acid. At first I didn't know why he was doing it. The teeth I tried writing off as some weird dentistry fixation, but now I know better. He's destroying my identifiable remains, making me disappear. I wish I could kick him, punch him, bite him, something, anything but I'm completely helpless. My mouth is a throbbing pit, my hands just as bad. The phantom itching in my missing fingers is always the worst when he picks up his foot-long shears, another relic from the garage. The dull blades had been stained green and brown from chopping branches and hedges. Now they're covered in shades of red, bright red from yesterday, a lighter red from the day before, a brownish red from the first week. I never know if he's going to make it a clean break, or if he's going to take his time, slowly snipping away at the flesh and playing with the bone. With this damn thing in my mouth, I can't even beg for him to do it quickly. All I can do is hope. The blade bites into the sides of my fingers just above my knuckle. Blood drips onto the armrest, and then onto the concrete floor. Finally, the fingers detached, and in the jar, flesh and bone dissolving. He grabs the butane torch and readies the flame. The first two seconds hurt like hell, and then the shock sets in. The smell of my flesh burning had me throwing up the first two days. Now I'm sort of used to it. It still makes me sick, but it bothers him too. He holds his hand over his nose and mouth while the flame's on me. No more teeth. No more fingers. My ten days are done. I still have my toes, tongue, ears, my manhood. I don't know if this is good or not, but he's taking stuff out of the room. Every other time, he left the equipment lying there in front of me. Now he's putting it outside the door. Out goes the torch, the pliers, the shears, even the jar and the IV stand. He pops the piece out of my mouth and readies a shiny syringe. The injection doesn't hurt the cool fluid pushing into my vein. He places another syringe on the counter. This one has its cap on. I ask, What was that? He undoes my forearm straps, then releases the one around my shins. He grabs hold of the harness and gives it a hard jostle. You can undo these yourself. I hold up my hands, no fingers to flip him off. How? Do you even know why it's ten days? I can't stand it when he stares at me like this. Look at me. Why did I give you ten days? Talking isn't going to help. That's how long my wife was on life support before I told them to pull the plug. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're sorry I'm doing this to you, but that's it. You only care about yourself. That's not true. Well, we're about to see how much you do care for yourself. Very shortly, you're going to notice that it is becoming harder and harder to breathe. I can already see you're struggling a bit to get air. I am feeling a bit winded, my throat swollen, the airway seemingly smaller. My wife couldn't breathe without life support. Unlike her, you're getting a chance. See this syringe here? The stuff in there will counteract the injection I just gave you. It's hard to talk, but I managed to get out. Give it. Give it to yourself. You have a few minutes. He turns his back on me and closes the door, the click of the deadbolt sliding into place. There's no guarantee that he's telling the truth about the other syringe, but my throat's getting tighter, my time's running out. The chest harness has two push-button locks, one on each side of my hips. 
I can reach them, but have nothing with which to push them. My thumbs are the most prominent knuckles, and my best shot. He took my left thumb first, so it shouldn't be as raw and painful as the other. Pieces of charred flesh crack off on the hard plastic. Tears flow from my eyes, blood from my knuckle. God, it hurts, but I can't get full breaths anymore. I have to get free. The lock pops open, but the other side's worse, my right thumb having been cut off yesterday. I try my other knuckles, but they're too small and just as painful. Now my entire hand is a bloody mess. I keep trying with my thumb as I'm forced to sip air. The lock opens and my chest is free. The seatbelt is easy to open using my elbow. I'm lightheaded and almost sit back down, but I can't. I need that syringe. I try to grab it off the counter with both hands, but it slips between my knuckles. Using the bridge of each hand, I get the cap off, bending the needle in the process. Hopefully it will still work. I pick it up between the bridge of my left hand and the knuckles on my right. It slips, but I manage to jab it through my shirt and into my belly. My palm's on the plunger when the intercom goes on. I forgot to mention you need to get that into your vein. I pull it out and try to put it back on the counter, but it falls to the floor. I follow it, dropping to my knees, unable to continue standing even if I wanted. My throat is sealed off, no air getting through. Thirty or forty seconds is the most I've got left. I claw at my throat, want to tear a hole in it, but have no fingers to dig with. My mind's fuzzy, but I have an idea and lie on my side. Put my arm on the cold concrete next to the syringe. I line the needle with my vein. All I have to do is push it in. It's in. Just push the plunger. It's down all the way, but I don't feel anything. I still can't breathe. There's a crack down the side of the syringe. On the floor near my arm is a pool of clear fluid. I can't breathe. Can't move. Time's up. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.